See, about two years ago, in the off season of 2006 to 2007, I awoke at 5 a.m. in the morning to the sound of my grandmother screaming her head off, banging on a steel door with her broomstick because there were squirrels in her bird feeder. <laughs> now, she was screaming at them so loud and so furiously that you would have thought Satan had laid siege to that bird feeder. <laughs> and that it was a matter of national security that we get those, those squirrels out of that feeder. So, I, who was sleeping on her floor at the time, because I had no place else to go, because I didn't make enough in the miners to move out on my own. I didn't make enough to buy a decent bed and an air mattress with a very nice piece of memory foam. Let me tell you that stuff great. Um, I was sleeping in her spare sewing room. Pink walls, sewing equipment, outdated sewing machine, a flannel gram as a headboard from where my grandmother used to teach Sunday school with. And I marched out there and I did what any respectful grandson would do. I told her to shut up. <laughs> and of course she did it. She looked at me and she said, if you don't like the way I do things in my house, you can move out. And that was the end of that conversation because I had no place to go. So the end result of this was me in my underwear with a pair of snow boots on, throwing snowballs at the bird feeders until the squirrels left so I could go back to bed. And it was around this point in my career as a baseball player that I had to stop and look at the direction my life was going in and say, is this really where I thought I was going to end up after six years of playing baseball? The answer is no. I mean, when I signed the contract, I expected limos to take me from point A to point B and to women to throw their undergarments at me every time. I thought that for sure I would be on TV a lot more than I was and I would be signing sweet autographs for every little girl and boy who saw me. I was living on my grandmother's floor in an air mattress wearing the same clothes that I bought when I signed my contract. I had no money. I had a whole written wardrobe that girls would not date me if they saw me in, which makes me wonder how I got married. But I fooled her. I, I drugged her. Don't tell. Uh, so I had, to, I had to start evaluating things. And it was it's a hard, hard thing to understand. Maybe for you... Um, Maybe not for a pro athlete, but, but it's a difficult thing to look at a dream like baseball, something that you've aspired your whole life to be. I always wanted to play pro baseball. I wanted to play it since I was a little kid. Whether it was to be out there and be on TV or just make a ridiculous amount of money, whatever it was, I always wanted to be a pro baseball player. Of course, when I thought of pro baseball player, I thought of big leaguer. I thought of grand royalty. And every time I strutted out on the mound, I'd have my own theme music, you know? I thought all the things that would go with it. And it doesn't always work out the way you dream when you're young. There's a lot of dues to be paid in this game. A lot. There's tour bus rides that are 12 hours long on a bus that smells like urine because everybody that goes to the back won't sit down like the tour bus directions say. They just stand there and whiz and spray the whole wall down. <laughs> There's a never-ending stream of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for you to eat because at that level they don't put out good nutritious meals even though they expect you to eat good nutritious meals. You get PB and J and animal crackers, you get a spread of giant eagle fruit and vegetables, which you won't get any pineapple if you don't come in first thing after BP, because the Dominican guys will get the crap out of that. <laughs> so, there's, there's bad paychecks, and, and I mean bad paychecks. I mean bad on par with, you're not making as much as the high school dropout who's messing your order up at McDonald's bad. Okay? <laughs> So here I am, and I'm thinking about all I've done in the last six years, and I'm thinking of all the crazy things that have happened to me, and I'm thinking of how bad I wanted this to happen, how, how much I would have given for this, and, and literally, I starved for it. I tried to cut weight so severely in college that I passed out and collapsed and laid unconscious for a good half an hour before my roommate found me. I fell face first and broke my nose and my glasses starving myself to cut weight because I wanted to look better for scouts who made opinions of me. Um, I tried to throw hard to the point where I would go three or four times a day. And that's not, that's not a joke. To, uh, I would go work out at Kent, but I would go work out in the morning before I went to team tryouts or team, team practices and then afterwards I would go to the gym and lift and run again. It was too much. 
I was killing myself for this, and I very nearly did. I got heart palpitations from it, from trying to make it. I wanted it that bad. And now I, I got myself into this situation where I had nothing to show for it. Six years of floundering in the minor leagues, I had gone nowhere. Every time someone would ask me, so, are you going to see you in the big leagues next year? I'd always say, yeah, you know, yeah, of course, but I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it myself. It's tough. You're beating your head against a wall, and the slope to the top is a very steep one. So I took a step back to kind of evaluate it, and I decided that that season was going to be my last one in the minors, period. Either something would have to just break loose for me and tell me that you've got a shot in this game, or I was just going to cut my losses because, believe me, when you're young and you're idealistic and you look at this game and you think about all it can give you, you think of the glorious stuff in front of you, it's charming, it's intoxicating. But after six years of floundering in it, you don't have your own place, you're driving the same rusted out Honda that you've been driving for the last five years, no clothes, living with granny, throwing snowballs and squirrels for accuracy. You start to think, maybe this isn't all life is cracked up to be. Maybe there's more than just playing baseball. It's something you'd never think you'd utter. Now you're thinking about every day because you feel trapped. As fate would have it, I would have one of the best seasons I would ever have in the minors that year. And it was because I put it all on the line. If this doesn't work out, I'm done. I'm not holding anything back. I'm not worried about anything else. I'm going to throw it all out there. I'm going to push myself to the very limit and let what comes come. And sure enough, that probably was the attitude I should have had the whole time. Instead of playing defensively and worrying about what each bad outing or walk meant, I started concerning myself only with the positives. I focused on everyone and I went towards them with, with a fury. On August 23rd of 2008, I became a celebrity in my own right when I got pulled up to pitch for the San Diego Padres in the big leagues against the San Francisco Giants. I made my first career start. And from going from one end of the, end, end of the spectrum where I thought, I'm never going to make it, I need to count the cost and get out, go back to school, get a degree, be done with this game, maybe start writing more articles for the repository. Two years later, I find myself on a big league mound, in front of big league fans, pitcher for a big league team, and all that comes with it. <coughs> and if it wasn't for the fact that I had struggled through so many bumps, if I had slept at grandma's house on the floor, throw snowballs and squirrels, or yes, driven for hours on urine scented tour buses, I would never have been able to enjoy the game like I do now, to look at all that comes with it. And those bumps that we hate that we feel like turn our lives into such a crappy situation. We dislike having to deal with adversity. And we wanted it to be that dream, ex that evolution to the big leagues with, with no fences to hop and no bridges to cross and no rivers to swim through. We want it to be that way. And it doesn't always show up that way. And a lot of times we get angry and we walk away from it because we don't want to be challenged. The hardest things to endure in this sport isn't necessarily what happens on the field, it's what happens around the field. Dealing with life as it comes at you. And the best thing that baseball or any sport can give you is the ability to not only deal with competition in the game, but to deal with competition and the adversity that life will present you outside of it. And that is why I write about it. Because I feel like there's more to be learned than just how to strike out some schmo who will be here today and gone tomorrow. There's a lot of lessons to learn about life, how to do it right how to care for others, how to endure things, how to overcome obstacles. Those are timeless lessons. And I learned them. And I'm, if I would have never made it to the big leagues, if I would have never got to walk Dave Roberts on four pitches <laughs> in my first, my first time on a pro mound, I still would have said, you know what, baseball has been very good to me. I may not have had any money, any, any cards to sign, but I would have had a lot of life experience in the kind that was priceless, cannot be replaced. And with that, I'm going to end this and tell you thank you very much for letting me come and speak to you who have so much life experience to give. 